today should be fun because it's the Tibetan five rites, or at least that's the foundation of it. And so we'll do five rites, and then in, interspersed in between, there'll be some Qigong movements, there'll be a little bit of stretching, and, and uh, just moving our body. So, <clears throat> first let's begin just by doing the first rite, and that is spinning. So arms out, shoulder height, just slowly spin. Picking that one point to fix your gaze on as you turn around, and then find that point again, counter or clockwise rotation, looking down from the top. And you could explore going slow, and then just bring attention to how those little muscles in the feet are helping you turn and twist. I'm going to try, I, thought I lost count, but I'm going to try to go around about nine times. I'm going to, you can vary these from one to 21, odd numbers. Why, I don't know. It's just what they say to do. And I'm going to try to do about nine this morning, unless I lose count. So just come to some stillness, and then we'll just tap our kidneys or knock on the doors of life and Basically, just give the little crystals in our in our inner ear a chance to to come back. If that if that makes you dizzy, you can go a little bit slower on that spinning on that first drive. But just let the back hand gently tap the kidney, the front hand maybe come to the side of the rib, just waking up that C of G along the side of the ribs, the end point of the spleen channel. Mm. and then slowly come to some stillness and we'll continue turning and twisting by doing how it looks back so feet shoulder width apart and we'll just ground ourselves down bend your knees and this will be our reset so palms facing the body and so we slowly turn, turn rotate your palms out look back lift up and then come back to center palms back towards the body bend the knees reset and then the other side, turn back, lift up. Just going slow. There's more discovery I found in the little movements, the tiny movements by going slow and maybe just bringing your, your attention and your mind activity to those little, those little movements, those little muscles, little pieces of connective tissue. That tensegrity fascial skeleton, if you will, that holds our body up. Do one more, so last side, lifting out, lifting up, looking back. And then we'll come back to center. Let's do washcloth just to warm up our shoulders. <clears throat> so bring your arms out, shoulder height. And I'm going to turn my left hand rotating to where the thumb faces back, only the palms up in the rotated direction. And then just switch back and forth in between, just rinsing those shoulders, wringing out, going slow again, slow is key. I'm saying that not so much to <laughs> cute for anyone else except for myself because it's tempting to want to try to do things quickly to use momentum to just push through but instead let's recruit those little muscles relax your shoulders just let go sometimes it's a paradox but the sometimes the more we can relax the more we can actually receive benefit Maybe a further range of motion, even though we're, we're contracting muscles in order to get to the maximum rotation, but maybe relaxing down just allows and frees up things. So we'll do one more, and then we'll relax, bring the arms down. So let's do the wave, but first let's do, I'm going to pick two points of the, the maximum, if you will. So I'm going to 
grab my fingertips into those, those crane hands and have those hands come towards the, the inside of the forearms. And bend the knees just like you're going to get on a, on a ski lift chair. Tuck the tailbone around the spine. Hands and arms reaching forward, tailbone back, booty back. And then let's slowly come up and we'll go to the opposite now. So slide your hands along a rail. Now lift the chest, look up, elbows back, hip points are forward. So those are the two extremes. Now let's just move in between each one of those. Just going slow. So we're moving that tailbone back and forward. The hips are leading this movement. We're moving from extension to flexion. Just going slow. Maybe we're finding maybe our maximum point at each one of these. So let's try now just to do the wave. Just relax a little bit and let it flow. A little bit quicker, but just let it flow. This is similar to rowing a boat in the air. Just moving that spine, pumping the cerebral spinal fluid, moving stuff around. So much of our day we Either don't move or have limited movements. Let's just move in all the ways practically that the body can move. And then come to stillness and relaxation. Just to move those fluids around. So let's do wall squats. Now, imagine that I'm going to have my arms out because I need it for balance. But feet, and again, if this is your first time, maybe just go wider. Wider is easier, but have your feet, maybe shoulder distance to start, and imagine you're sliding your, your whole body down a wall. Slowly come down. Now I have to use my arms out front as a counterbalance. To come down. And then to come up, look up first. Raise your head, look up. And then tuck the tailbone as you come back up. And we'll do two more, so slowly go down, just like you're sliding down a wall, your whole body is going down a wall, and then come down as low as you can, as low as is comfortable. Lift the head, look up, and as you come up, tuck the tailbone, slowly come up, we'll do one more. There's so many junctures of fluids, obviously, in the hips. I'm just slowly starting to wake those up. Come up last time. And then relax. Those are very energetic, even though we do them really slow. They're very, very energetic. Move a lot of fluids, move a lot of chi. So let's throw out the trash. And to do that, we'll take two inhales up, up on our toes. <sighs> throw out that trash. <sighs> As you come up, have your fingertips as high as I can. Ooh, up. Last one. Nice. Once again, moving the hips. So now let's do three Qigong forms that move the shoulders. Not the whole body, but mainly the shoulders. Let's do spiral palms. So hands, palms up, hands along the side. We'll cross the body with our palm, just looking at the underneath of our palm as it comes up and over our head. 
elbow turning because we're going to reach back with that palm, reach behind us, grab some chi, bring it back to that point along our side. We'll do the other side, come across the body, looking at the palm, slowly coming up. Letting that palm rotate because we're going to lead with the elbow, coming back, grab some chi. Other side, spiral palm. You can feel a, maybe a compression as we come across. So compression here as we come across. That long one, long two point, and then rotate, and then reach back. Grabbing some chi, good. And we'll do serving teacups, hands in a similar position. So we'll offer a teacup out to the side in the front. They didn't want it, so now we'll offer it back behind. And then we're just going to bring it around, going slow, see if you can not spill any of that hot tea, up and over and around the head, and then back, and back to the side. We'll do the other side, offering it to the front and to the side, across our body. They don't want it, so now we're going to offer it back behind. And then we're going to spiral around, trying not to spill any of the hot tea. Palm flat, up and open. And then we're going to over and around, and up and over our head. And then back down. Serve teacup one more time. Just enjoying that opening of the shoulder, slight back bend. The head automatically, the head and neck are automatically moving. So last one, serving in the front, serving in the back, bringing it around. You can play with the circumference of the circle that you're moving that wrist. Just move slowly and gently. So now let's do the second of the Tibetan rides. So let's come to the mat on our back. Double crunch lift. I don't know if that's the proper name, but it makes sense to me. So let's lift our head, look at our toes, hands along the side, and then lift those feet up towards the ceiling and then back down. Look at the toes, feet come up, almost as if you're going to have legs up the wall. And don't, if your hamstrings are tight, don't force it. This is just a movement. This is to move stuff around. Back down. One more. Then let's do some yogi bicycles. So just pedal your yoga bicycle. You can lift your head if you want. I'm not. I'm just going to enjoy the ride. And then reverse direction, pedal backwards. Long, slow pedaling strokes. Use that range of motion in the hips, in the knees, just to move that synovial fluid around. Now bring your knees to your chest. Rotate your ankles both directions. Big rotations. 
both directions. And then we'll do figure four. So I'm going to start with my right heel on top of my left thigh. And you can make it a resistance stretch too by pushing your knee away but using your arm to pull that right knee towards your body. You see? Stretching the outside of that right leg, the back, piriformis, among others. And then we'll switch sides. This time my left heel on top of my right thigh. Once again, pushing away with that left knee, but I'm using my my hand and my arm to pull that closer to my body. You can also grab behind the right knee and pull that leg forward as you're pressing the left knee away. Just play around, see what sensations or movements feel like a, a nice stretch. What your body needs to open up today in that, in that hip, around that hip joint. And then we'll release and make our way back to tabletop on our mat. So hands below the shoulders, knees below the hips. Just a couple cat and cows. Drop the belly for cow. Wiggle your hips from side to side. Pay attention to your body. Take the movement that you need. I'm kind of rocking my hips from side to side as much as I am doing cat and cow. Because it feels good. Or some combination. You can do a jump rope with your spine. Whatever feels good. And then we'll thread the needle. So I'm going to plant my left hand on the mat, lift my right elbow, lift my right hand up, and then duck, right hand underneath, coming in to thread the needle. You can bring your <clears throat> left hand to your sacrum, left hand over and up to the top, above your, above your head at the front of the mat if that feels good. And then we'll return, reversing that operation, left hand back and down on the mat, opening up now the right side, elbow up, hand up, and then we'll switch, this time planting the right hand, lifting the left elbow up, and the hand, and then threading the needle through, over, right hand to the sacrum, opening up that side body, and then up, and then I'm dropping my right hand forward, above my head, reaching forward, maybe using the fingertips to spider crawl a little bit further, a little bit over. And then we'll reverse, so hand back to the sacrum, and then back to the ground, lifting now the left arm up and back. So let's do maybe uh, either knees wide or narrow, but let's come into a child's pose. But then let's let our hands and arms. Go to the side for maybe a banana. So side flexion of your upper body while you're in child's pose, while your knees are in child's pose. Go to the side, stretch that, that side body. And then walk your fingers back to center to the other side, opening up the side body on the other side. 
maybe on an inhale, opening up a little bit, and then on an exhale, letting that side body come down as well as over. And relax, we'll come back to center. We'll make our way up for the third portion of the five Tibetan rites. It's kind of like camel, only we're going to focus on maybe some different aspects of the body. So tuck your toes. It may not be comfortable because, once again, we don't move that way much. So let's take our fingers facing towards each other, palms down, and let's really press down in front. Press down our, our, our hips and our thighs. So really pushing down. Now bring your hands to the top of your hips and the back. You'll be touching that sacrum. And then as we drop back, focus on your hip points coming forward and your chest lifting. And press down on your hips so you're opening up and not back, but opening up and out. And then we'll reverse. Fingers together, palms down, pushing forward, down as we are moving forward. And then hands back, top of the hips, hip points come forward. Really try to open up those hip flexors. And then just Alternate between the two, going slow, enjoying the movement. I found that for me and my lower back, having those hips come forward while I'm opening the chest up seems to compress that lower back less. At the same time, it's opening up the upper body Obviously stretching those hip flexors. Maybe we'll do one more, pressing down in front. Opening up in the back, picking them on just to press down on those hips, the hip points come forward, chest opens, and then back. Now we'll untuck our toes and come into kind of a, a saddle. So Hips, all right, knees wide, and uh, if you need to pad, pad your knees, roll your blanket, or roll your mat, get a blanket, go ahead and do that. Sometimes you can put a block underneath your sit bones, but let's just come into saddle. And in order to maybe give us a diversion, we'll do tiger hands. So. Reach back behind your ears. Now forward with your claws. And now grab a big towel. Now the claws are going to be facing up. We're going to bring those back towards our ears and then duck them underneath our shoulders. Reach our claws all the way back. Claws are facing up. Now turn where the claws face down and sweep forward. Back towards the ears. Launch the claws forward. Scratch a big circle and grab the towel. Bring the claws back. Now duck underneath the armpits and then push the claws back. Turn the claws down and scratch forward. And then forward. Grab that towel. Bring back towards the ears. Duck underneath. Send your claws back. Turn your claws to where you're sweeping and scratching. And then forward, last one. Scratch, bring that big towel back towards you. Duck underneath, claws back, and then sweep down. And then relax. Now just take notice of your, of your quads, of your hips and stuff. And, Notice, at least for me, there's some softness now because we were so in our head thinking about moving our hands and our shoulders that our, our lower body just said, okay, I'm fine. I'm, 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 I'm. 
relax. And if you're not, that's okay too. But if it's in your practice, we're going to slowly drop back. I'm going to scoot forward. Slowly drop back into back hero. This may or may not be comfortable at all. As we go back, you can give yourself a nice massage in the bottom of your feet with your knuckles just pressing in. Once again, just slowly coming down to whatever point is comfortable. It varies day by day. And if, if this is not in your practice and you say, no way, I'm not going to do that, that's fine. And come back to child's pose. This asana or posture is one that brings up a lot of emotions for me. I can't wait to get out of it. It's not comfortable at all. It's one of those yoga asanas that you're supposed to embrace. I still don't embrace it, <laughs> but it, it feels okay once you come out of it. <laughs> it's a relief to be done, if that's any consolation. So now just make your way. We'll do 290 degrees. So I'm going to have my left knee towards the end of the mat. And really our hips are making 290 degrees. Knee forward, calf at 90 degrees. Now, if, yeah, set up 290 degrees. <laughs> and then face that front knee. And then maybe slide your sit bone away from the back knee. In other words, I'm pinning my back knee and just sliding my sit bone over. Open up that, that hip even more. And now, <clears throat> I want you to bring in mind the times that you've done, if you've done, if you haven't done before, that's okay. But where you've done half lift, where you're trying to get the maximum length between your tailbone and the crown of your head, and just keep that that half lift length from the crown of your head to your tailbone, because your tailbone's back, and then slowly, slowly fall forward, well not fall, slowly go down over that front knee. Once again, trying to keep that half lift sensation. The length between the crown of the head and the tailbone as you come down slowly, slowly. Just noticing the sensations in your hip as you do that, still maintaining that length from the crown of the head back to the tailbone. And then you come down as far as you can. We can relax, just let go, maybe two breaths. Instead of sleeping pigeon, maybe it's sleeping 90 degrees, I don't know. But anyway, let's come back up again. Once again, still now with that half lift length between the crown of the head and the tailbone. Let's set up for a twist. One hand at the back of the heel, the hand behind the thigh. Just twist, look to the side. Be behind. And then we'll switch our hips. So for me, I can lift my hands, somewhat rotate the hips, end up close. It still takes a lot more position. We'll set up 90 degrees on the other side. Once again, try to get the distance between that back knee and the sit bone just by pinning and pulling over. Just angle your body, your hips, maybe towards that front knee, a little bit of shifting. Then same half lift length, slowly come over that front knee now. Trying to maintain that length between the crown of the head and the tailbone. Tailbone back. Paying attention to sensations of the hip as we go down. Just noticing, no judgment. Just noticing. Come down to the bottom, you can relax, release, or sleeping 90 degrees, maybe a breath or two. Slowly come up, maintaining that length. And 
then we'll make our way back to the mat if we're off of it, and just lie back, bring the soles of your feet together. We're bound cobbler or cobbler. Just let your knees be wide, the soles of the feet together, and just just open up. Maybe one hand to the heart, one hand to the chest. Take just a moment to notice your breath. And then fall in bridge. So now, soles of the feet as wide as you can, where the knees almost touch. And just let there be a little bit of tension. Soles of the feet wide, knees almost touching. Fall in bridge. Internal rotation of those humors. Bring your knees to your chest and slowly rock up. Come into staff pose. And we'll set up for the fourth of the five Tibetan rites. Reverse tabletop or up bridge. And when we come up into that reverse tabletop, let's lead with our tailbone. So just really have the tailbone be the first thing up, and the last thing down. Just moving from staff pose to reverse table, to change the sensation on your shoulders. You can move your hands further away from your hips. To the back of the mat, giving more sensation, opening the shoulders, it feels good. You can just stay in that for a minute. If it doesn't feel good, come back down into staff pose. It's Once again, this is not the most comfortable or, boy, I can't wait to do this. So many so many movements, so much complexity, so much strength and stretch, stability needed to really pull this off. Last one. Back into staff and then if it's comfortable, we can do fish pose. So just slowly lean back, come to your elbows, point your toes, let your head come back, opening the chest, fingertips towards the top of the hips. You start to take the navel away and up, opening the chest. This is too aggressive. Don't do anything to injury. To come out, you can just slowly take your elbows out and slowly let your head come to the mat and then relax. This asana is supposed to cure all ails and ailments. The only one you need to do. I think others are beneficial too, but this one's pretty aggressive. It's one of those simple, tricky things. You think, well, not much is going on, but there's a lot going on. So now let's slowly take our elbows out, let the top of the head come to the mat, and then slowly relax down into the mat. Let's bring our knees to our chest. And then we'll drop our knees to both sides. So pick a side. Maybe your hands and arms come to a T or a cactus. Just let your hips come to the side for a twist. If it's comfortable, you can look in the opposite direction that you let your hips fall. And just release and relax.
And then we'll switch sides, bring hips back to neutral, back through center, and then fall on the other side. And then back to center, giving these a hug, and then rock, coming back up. And now we'll find a forward fold. To do this, <clears throat> let's bend our knees a lot, to the point to where we can find kidney one on the bottom of our the soles of our feet. So to find that, just let your fingers find your big toe mound drop down, and then over. Between those, it's the metatarsal, between the second and third metatarsal, in other words, from your big toe mound down, and then towards the midfoot, and there's a depression. Find that depression. Just give it some gentle rubs. Kidney one, bubbling spring. Release anxiety and tension, only point on the body that's or the only acupressure point, it's on, this, on the sole of the feet, the bottom of the feet. Only a point's on the top and the side of the feet, but this is the only one on the bottom. Now let's find another point back behind the knees, bladder 40. Just give that, that soft area behind the knees just a gentle rotation and relaxation. And while you're doing that, bring sensation or awareness of sensation, just relaxing your lower back, just letting go. That's a control point for the lower back. Just let it go. And now find a forward fold. Maybe you, maybe you keep that kidney, kidney one, that bubbling spring. Just fall forward. You can move towards straightening your knees or straighten your knees wherever your body happens to be today, but just spend a moment just to relax. And then release your grip. Slowly come up and we'll move into the last of the five Tibetan rites, that transition between up dog and down dog, or an up dog like, and down dog like. So first we'll come to plank, we we'll have tabletop and then plank, and then let's push back into down dog. It's our first one, so bend the knees a lot, move from bending the knees to moving towards straightening the knees. Just take a moment to get comfortable in the down dog. You may need to Adjust your width of stance, both in your feet and your hands. And then let's transition through. So just let your hips drop, your shoulders come forward. You kind of come into plank. And then keep that going. We'll be an up dog. So we didn't untuck our toes. Our toes are still tucked. Now push up from the shoulders. Lift the back of the thighs towards the ceiling. Gaze straight forward. Now slowly push back. We'll transition through plank. Back into down dog. And then we'll repeat. Just that transition from up dog to down dog. Moving slow, so don't injure our lower back, because that's a transition point for this. Don't want to be like that paper clip that we bend and bend and bend and bend until it breaks. No, that's not, not the goal. This is just to move fluids, move ligaments, move tendons, bring awareness to those little tiny postural muscles. Fascia that hold us up. 
of the spring through the day. One more. Come back into plank. And we'll do a side plank. So I'm going to bring my left hand underneath my, my chest, rolling to the right, reaching up, and then thread the needle. It's taking that right hand. Letting it come down, thread the needle. If you need to drop your knee, just for some stability, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna drop my knee now and set up for gate pose. So my left knee is down, right leg is out. I'm gonna let my right hand slide down that leg as I bring my left hand up and over, but mainly up. So I want to get that nice opening on that left side body. Maybe on an exhale, slowly let that right hand work its way down that right leg. To explore sensation, you can press down with your right foot, have your left hip go over. Notice that in your right adductors, inside of your right thigh. Now we're going to do half circles, so let that left hand come back to the mat, right hand come forward. Just make a really nice half circle with your body. Right hip point, focus on bringing that towards the ceiling, lifting the hip point up. Fingertip forward. And then relax, we'll transition through a tabletop, back to plank. Do the other side, so plant your right hand underneath, roll left, thread the needle, once again if you need to drop the knee for stability, go ahead and do that, we're going to drop it anyway, as we come into gate pose, drop that right knee, set up the gate on this side, <coughs> Left hand going down, right hand up, and up, and over, mainly up. Once again, if you want to explore sensation, press down now on your left foot, right hip comes over. And then we'll move into half circles. So bring your right hand back to the mat. Left hand forward. Nice big half circle. This time left hip point. Side of the left hip towards the ceiling. Fingertips forward, reaching forward. And then release. And back to tabletop. And then make your way to standing. We'll finish our practice before Shavasana with the Golden Exchange. So take just a moment to ground, feet shoulder width, relax your knees, hips are neutral, tailbone neither forward nor backward. Arms hanging <coughs> naturally to your sides. Now we'll just lift our arms, float back down. Lift your arms high, fingertips high to the ceiling, and let the palms bring that energy from above, from the universe, to the crown of your head, and then behind your neck, in front of your shoulders, and start to bend over. Bring the hands to the kidney, all along the back line. Bend your knees, relax down. Ground your hands in front. Now come up the inside of the feet, the inside of the knees, the the front of the thighs, and along the midline, just up that midline. 
get bloom the hands forward. Trace the belt line all the way to the back. Then release those fingertips back, lean back. So they bring the hands towards the front, rotating to where the palms face forward. Gather the energy towards the navel. Hands along the side, push down and up and off the earth, and then relax. Do it again. Lift up, float back, reach high. Now bring that energy down, the crown of your head, behind your neck, your shoulders, and then start to bend over. And then let that energy all along the back line, down the back. Ground the hands in front. Now we'll come up the yin side, the inside, in the front of the thighs, up the midline. Loom the hands forward. Trace the belt line all the way to the back. Extending the fingertips back. Bring the hands around. Gathering. Now push down off the earth. And relax. Last one. Lift up. Float back. Reach high. Gather. Bring down. The chi pour down. Behind the neck, the front of the shoulders, and then start to bend over. Now, to the kidneys, all along that back line. Ground the hands up the inside. And then the front of the thighs, along the midline, let the hands bloom forward. Trace the belt line all the way to the back. Now bring the hands around, gather chi from the sides and in the front. Bring that towards your navel, towards your lower back hand. Hands pushing yourself up off the earth, and then relax. Shavasana. Let's make our way into Shavasana. Whether it's seated or lying, grab what you need, get comfortable. And we'll just spend a few minutes relaxing. As you make your way into Shavasana, a lot of times in yoga, the image of water or lake has been used, so as you're comfortable in Shavasana, whatever, however that looks for you, just bring an image of water, maybe a lake or a pond. Bring that to mind. And you probably have a pretty long view, a pretty wide view, so let's move in. Notice, is there waves? Is there movement? There might be. Now just try to try to bring some stillness to that water. Calm the water. See the water be more still. Now slowly transition that water. Slowly. Where it's very still. Very still. Now as you observe the water, still and quiet. Now that the water has been used as a metaphor for your mind, usually rushing and moving, but it can be brought to stillness. Now just enjoy that stillness for a couple of minutes. And then we'll end our practice with some pranayama and short meditation.
and slowly bring awareness back to your breath. Notice your inhale. Notice your exhale. If you are lying down, maybe bring the soles of your feet to the mat. Do effortless rest. Maybe hands and arms high for a stretch, a long stretch. And then roll to your side through fetal position and make your way to a seat. If you're seated already, just check. Make sure that you're, you're comfortable. Your sit bones are grounded. Kind of your head is lifted. Maybe to check posture, if your nose is above your navel, you don't have to look. Just see if your body can be aware of that sensation. Lifting up from the crown of the head. Now let's do straw breaths. So let's just breathe in gently through the nose. And then exhale as we purse our lips as if we're slowly exhaling through a straw. Gentle, soft and smooth. The straw breathing encourages a slower exhale, which is very comforting and relaxing for our, for our nervous system. And then for our meditation, I just wanted to do maybe just three of the Om Mani Padme Hum. And the interesting thing is that, that humming or gargling stimulates the vagal nerve. Um, so does chanting. And that's the beauty, vagal nerve for a reset, once again, just to help us quiet and settle. So, just three of Om Mani Padme. So, the breath in. Om Mani Padme. Let's bring our hands together, gather some, some heat, some energy, some cheese, some product. Our thumbs to our third eye. To our chin or our lips. And then to our heart. Light in me sees, recognizes, and respects the light in you. Kiss your hands, open your eyes, and thanks for practice.